Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to church today. We are happy, so happy that you could join us for Sabbath worship uh, service. We know that it's a little bit challenging for you to be home all these weeks. We understand um, what it feels like because all of us are at home. Um, however, we are happy to know that we can still be bringing you services, and we know you're enjoying the services. We have had some feedback from some of our members and others who have been watching, and people are enjoying the services. We also want to thank those who have allowed or lend themselves to assist in um, doing the recordings or providing songs or doing other parts of the worship. We are so glad that you are being involved. We thank you so much. May God bless you as you worship today and may his peace attend you. We are glad that we can still be together even though we are sometimes miles apart. God bless you. Enjoy the services. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I hope you are having a relaxing morning and um, you're listening to uh, our service. So I just want to give you a few announcements at this time. So number one, Sabbath school classes are still meeting um, via Zoom and Sabbath mornings. So watch for the connecting information that will come via the one call. So Pastor... Manly will send uh, that information out to us. Uh, number two, for prayer meeting, 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Um, that's still on Zoom as well. We have begun an exciting study on Bible prophecy and end time events. Pastor Manley's next lesson will cover the difference between the time of trouble and the tribulation. Number three, we just want to thank you and praise God for his provision through the, these challenging times. Um, it is a challenging time for many, but you have proven to be faithful, and we just want to thank God for that. Um, last month, we were expecting some challenges, but thank God we are doing very, very well. And so we just want to say thank you to our uh, brothers and sisters, and uh, thank God for their faithfulness. We appreciate it very much. We also want to let you know that if you are having any problems, you can reach out to any of our pastors or any of our elders, and uh, we will do our best to see how we can um, uh, get some assistance for you. Uh, number four, um, we thank God for the decision made recently by the provincial government to begin opening up businesses and uh, services again. So very soon we'll be able to come together in church. Uh, we look forward to that with uh, a great anticipation. 
We are, however, trying our best to abide by the um, provincial regulations. So as soon as we are able to gather together in larger numbers, we will let you know and we will give you the information that we have with regards to opening the sanctuary. As it is now, I think we are only able to gather with about 10 people. And so as soon as we are able to gather with more individuals, uh, we will let you know. Um, number five. So attention all young adults. Mark your calendars. So this Sabbath afternoon at 3 p.m., we'll be having our young adult Bible study class on the topic of financial clarity amidst a pandemic. Um, Brother Randy will be presenting, and uh, it's promising to be an informative and uplifting presentation, followed by your question and answers, so you don't want to miss that. Make sure you are um, logged on and be ready to... Um, eat up that information, because in these times, these are challenging times. And uh, finances become a little bit of a difficulty, so we look forward to seeing you there so we can share um, those information with you. Thank you so much, and um, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. We're now going to turn our hymnals to hymn number eight. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. Our opening hymn, hymn number eight. have been hard and um, I'm sure sometimes you're wondering is there any reason any purpose to be alive is life worth the living we're going to sing him 526 just to remind ourselves that because Christ lives we have a reason to be happy we have a reason to be hopeful because he lives we can face tomorrow regardless of the challenges that we're facing him 526 because he lives God sent his son Great. 
Because we have the assurance that Christ resurrected and he lives again, it can be well with our souls. It is well with my soul, regardless of what's happening, the storms of our lives. We can still smile in the storm because we have Jesus in the vessel. It is well with my soul. Him 530. When a peace like a
this is the time as we come together to share um, what some of what God has blessed us with, um, with our church family. I want to bring to your attention um, two passages of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 13 to 15, and it reads, Many will give honor to God when they see how humbly you obey him and how faithfully you confess the gospel of Christ and will thank him for your liberal contribution to their need and to the general good. Thanks be to God for his gift beyond words. And in Romans chapter 12, verses uh, 6 to 8, it reads, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. We know that this is a challenging time for uh, many individuals in our society at this time. COVID-19 has created uh, significant challenges for all of us. But we can testify that even in the midst of the challenges we face, that God has been good. And we just want to say that as we look forward to uh, the end of COVID-19, we look forward to the return to normalcy somewhat. In the meantime, we want to do the best we can to help others. And as you know, the church uh, is here to help. And so for those who have needs, we just ask that you will reach out and we will do the best we can um, to assist. There are some programs that our government has put in place that will also help to assist those who are in need. And so we also encourage those who are able to give, to give to support the needs of others, to support the needs of the church, and to support those who are um, around us. So we pray that God will continue to bless us, and as we give, may his grace and his mercy continually attend our ways. Uh, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for your mercies and for your blessings. We are thankful for the opportunity we have to give to your cause as well as to give to the needs of others. We pray that you will bless us and continually guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, children. Welcome to our children's story. For our children's story today, we'll go to the book of Judges, chapter 13, all the way verse 16. It is the story of the strongest man who ever lived. Do you know the name of the strongest man who ever lived? Right, it is Samson. An angel came to Samson's parents before Samson was born and gave them special instructions on how they were supposed to take care of Samson. Do you know the name of Samson's parents? Right, it's Mr. and Mrs. Manoah. The angel gave them instructions uh, on how they were supposed to take off Samson. Number one, they were not supposed to give him anything unclean, no unclean foods. Number two, they're not supposed to give him any alcohol. And number three, a very unique instruction, they were not supposed to cut his hair, ever. And they were good parents and obeyed what the angel said. So Samson grew up to be a strong young man with very long hair. His hair was nothing like mine. It was long like this. And because Samson was strong, he protected the children of Israel from their enemies. Do you know some of the enemies of the Israelites? Right. They had Philistines, they had Egyptians, Assyrians, Canaanites, so they had many enemies. But on this occasion, their enemies were Philistines. And for 20 years, Samson protected Israel from all its enemies. And uh, after 20 years, it was ready, Samson was ready to get married. And he went and saw a beautiful girl among 
the Philistines. The name of the girl was Delilah. He came to his parents and he said, Mom, Dad, I'm ready to get married. I found a girl. Her name is Delilah, a Philistine. But the parents said, No, you cannot do that. It's best to marry from among the Israelites. But Samson said, No, she pleased me well. And went ahead and married Delilah. Eventually, Delilah figured the secret of Samson's strength, which was his hair, which has never been cut, and went and told Samson's enemies. And they asked him to cut his hair. So one day, when Samson was sleeping, Delilah came with a laser blade and cut off his hair. And now, Samson was bald again. But he had no strength because God had given him instructions not to cut his hair. Therefore, the strength that God had given him left him. So the enemies came and they captured Samson. He was weak now. They took off his eyes. He was blind. He was a slave. And they were so happy. But while Samson was suffering, he remembered that God is loving and gracious. So he prayed that God might forgive him and restore his strength. And God was gracious and kind and is always loving and uh, forgave Sam, uh, Samson. And his hair grew back. He got back his strength. On one occasion, when the Philistines were celebrating the capture of Samson in a big building, there were thousands of them, uh, uh, Samson's, they didn't realize that Samson's strength had come back. So, Samson went and pushed all the pillars of the building and the building came crumbling down. And Samson and thousands of the Philistines died. What we learn from this story? Right, number one, we should obey what God tells us. And what, and how do we know uh, what God's uh, instructions are? We find them in the Bible. Number two, we should obey our parents. And the Bible says, obey your parents' children so that your lives will be long and prosperous on this earth. And then number three is that God is loving and gracious. And no matter what we've done, if we go to him and repent, he will forgive us our sins. And before we go to the next program, I like us to uh, have a memory verse and a short chorus. The memory verse is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18, and it says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord, even though your sins are as red as scarlet, I will make you as white as snow. And the chorus I chose today is going to remind us of God's uh, patience with us and his love. And it says, God is still working on us to make us better every day. And it goes, He is still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How patient and loving he must be. He is still working on me. Thank you. Good morning, Pine House Church family. It's a beautiful Sabbath day yet again, and we thank the Lord for his many mercies. mercies. It is now time for the prayer garden, and this is a time where, as a church, we get together and we take our petitions to our heavenly. I'd like to read just two verses from Matthew chapter 7, starting from verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. 
and to him who knocks it will be opened. So let us take this time to go and seek the promises that God has promised us and that we can go and knock at heaven's door and we have that promise that we will receive what we ask for if it is in the Lord's will. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we come before your throne of grace and we come with thanks and praises for the life that you've given to each one of us. We thank you for the shelter that you've given to us, the food that you've provided for us. And we thank you for the many blessings that we can count and name one by one. Lord, at this time, we also bring before you those who are not in good health. Lord, you know the different health issues that the different members of our church have. And we pray, Lord, that you may bring healing to them and that if it is not your will that you will bring them to healing, we pray, Lord, that you may help us to accept what you give and that we may know that when we look back, we, we can always say that, God, what you did was the best thing for us. We pray, Lord, that you be with those who have been afflicted by coronavirus and those in hospitals with it. And Lord, our prayer is always for healing for the sick, that we do submit our will to your will. We pray for those who are up north here in Saskatchewan who have been very much affected by the coronavirus. We pray that you be with your children and that you may help us to get this thing to blow over so that we may get back to as normal a life as possible. Lord, we also bring before you those who have lost jobs in our church membership and Lord you know the different needs that they have and we pray that you may provide for their needs while they are in between jobs. We pray for those who are underemployed and we pray that you may provide for those too. Lord everything that you give to us you give to us as managers and we know that we are stewards to everything that we call our own and that we say we own and we pray Lord that we may not fail that stewardship test and that when it comes to sharing the things that you have given us to manage, that those of us who still have jobs may be willing to share with our church family. We are all pilgrims on this earth, Lord, and this world is not our home. And we know, Lord, that as we are all pilgrims, as Pine House Church, we are all extended family, and we are all one family. So we pray that, like the apostles of old, that we may share with each other and look after each other. Lord, we pray for the youth within our church and we thank you that they have had programs that have been put for them and that at this time when they are alone, we have been able to connect through Zoom and our youth have been able to connect with each other and to keep those spiritual fires burning. We pray that you may continue to bless them and to lead in our youth. We pray, Lord, that you be with the leaders of our church here at Pine House. We thank you for all the things that they have done to keep the church going at this time of crisis. We pray that you may bless their ministry in Saskatoon. Lord, we also pray for the leadership in the North American division because we know that they're going to be voting for a new president soon. We pray that the Holy Spirit may lead and that it may be a man who you want who will be taking the church to the new place that you want it to go. We pray, Lord, that whatever thoughts and ideas that you give to them, that they may come from you and that you may lead and direct in all things. Lord, we also pray for the general conference leaders and we pray that you be with them and that you bless them and that you bless the leadership direction that they have for us and that the church may grow because we know that you are coming soon. So our prayer is that we may share the good news of your soon coming with the rest of the world. Lord, we pray for the pastor who's going to be sharing the word with us just now and we pray that our hearts and our minds may be open to receive your word. We pray Lord that you may put the words that you want him to speak to us in his mouth and that he may be an instrument that is in your hand. We pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Happy Sabbath everyone. Our scripture of meditation comes to us today from Hebrews 10 and I'll be reading from verses 23 to 25. And it reads, 
Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much more, as he see the day approaching. Here ends a portion of God's holy word. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I've, uh, I'm going to be singing a song entitled, As the Deer. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. I hope that you and your family are doing well through this time. Um, we are now taking a slight uh, different direction or different road in our preaching for the next couple of weeks. We are covering the important topic of community. And in light of, of COVID-19 and, and being stuck and cooped up at home, um, I figured it would be important, or we as a team figured it would be important to answer the question of how can we continue to be and practice uh, a community even amidst remaining physically apart. And so will you pray with me this morning? Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you for all that you are doing for us and all that you will do for us. Father God, as we gather here together to worship you, we pray that your spirit may be with us, may open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So grab your Bibles. We're in Hebrews chapter 10. 
verse 23 to 25. I'll give you a second. Maybe you forgot your Bibles in your bedroom. I'll give you a second to run back in there and grab them. But we're in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25. If you have your phones or whatever device you have, turn with me in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 and 25. A very encouraging verse in today's day and age. It reads in verse 23, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Wow. What a timely verse. What a much-needed, encouraging verse in today's day and age to hold on to our hope, to hold on to that hope without wavering. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. Amen. We have a hope because the provider of our hope is faithful. Because just a few chapters prior to making this statement, the author of Hebrews uh, in chapter 6 Verse 18 says that it is impossible for God to lie. And so all of God's promises are true and are currently in the midst of being fulfilled in their completeness. And so my friends, my my church family whom I miss dearly, if you stop listening to anything I have to say from here on end, if you decide, decide to shut me off and do your own thing, just remember this one point. Hold on to your hope. Hold on to the provider of that hope. He will see you through. Jesus always was and always will be faithful. His promises are true and he is currently in the process of fulfilling his promise to come back again. And so family, this morning I'm here to remind you, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And as we continue on in verse 24, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good deeds or good works. This right here is the key to defining community, this verse, that we consider, that we think of different ways in which we can stimulate, and some translations say provoke, one another to love and to good deeds. Especially now when, when, when we are to think of how to encourage and support and uplift one another, we need to continue to do good deeds and express love to one another. And I'll share with you today some, some of the very many things that Pine House Church community has been doing to practice the gospel of community with each other, even amidst a time of social distancing. And then verse 25 reads, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now you may be saying, well, well, now now hang on a minute, Pastor. Why in the world would you pick such a verse as this? That's just cruel. You know we aren't permitted to gather together. However, Being together doesn't necessarily mandate a physical presence. You see, if COVID has taught us as a church community anything, it is that we must remain together even while we are apart. We must practice church with or without the walls of this beautiful church here. Let me draw this out for you. Perhaps you are very familiar with this, but on March 11 of this year, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 or coronavirus a pandemic. One week later, Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe declared a provincial state of emergency, closing just about the entire province in an attempt to, uh, uh, to slow the spreading of the virus so as to not overburden the healthcare system. In an effort to what has been called a flattening of the curve, just about all means of physical social interaction was ordered to close. Gyms, fitness centers, casinos closed all overnight. At first, restaurants, bars, and event venues cut their seating capacity to half capacity and shortly after closed their seating areas completely limiting restaurant operations to takeout and delivery only. Schools and daycare shut down, travel restrictions and and limitations have been enforced. 
an entire country, nay, an entire planet full of social beings have now been forced to practice social distancing and self-isolation by something that seemed as though no one even saw coming. I don't know about you, but personally, I have actually lost count of the number of weeks we have had to shut the doors of this church to the public. I was even texting our other other pastor and asking, hey, when, when did we shut down? I can't even remember. To which pastor replied, I, I, I can't remember myself either. And it saddens me greatly that we can't gather together to worship together in this beautiful church. And it has been an utterly difficult past few months for so many around the world and for so many even right here within this church family due to the closures. You see, because of these closures, many have lost their jobs. Many are struggling to make ends meet. Many have lost dearly loved family members. And the hardest part is that many aren't even able to go and mourn together with a family as a family together. And so my heart goes out to you. For a planet of social beings created for relationships, COVID has drastically altered what and how community looks like. And so if I were to ask you this morning, what does the word community mean to you? How would you answer that? If I were to ask you, what does community look like, what would your response be? Especially now in a day and age of a worldwide pandemic and social distancing, how can we possibly practice community? Is physical presence within the walls of this church a prerequisite or a requirement for the existence and practice of community? And not only that, but is church really just a building? Or is church a people? You see, if this pandemic has taught me anything or reminded me of the truth of something, it is that church, the community of believers, is not just some building. The church, the community, is not just a two-hour worship service once a week. The community, the church, is you and I. It is the people, it is the hearts, the attitudes, the love and the care that is exemplified and exuded even amidst the constraints of social isolation. I've entitled today's message, The Gospel of Community, because I'd like to remind everyone listening and watching today that the gospel is shared, lived, breathed in community. But community exists with or without these walls. So turn to your neighbor today, your husband, your wife, your brother, your sister, and tell them, we are the community. Turn to your other neighbor, whomever you may be isolated with, and tell them, we are the church. And if you're alone at home, look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am the church. You see, all throughout Scripture, we see the necessity of community. The Bible says such phrases as, it is not good for man to be alone. It will make, I will make your descendants as the sands of the sea. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. When you pray, pray our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Forgive our transgressions as we forgive others. Love your neighbors. Bear one another's burdens. All of creation, every bit of it was created for relationship, for community. This morning in your spare time, reread the creation story and discover or rediscover the interdependence of everything that God created. Everything that God created was to be in perfect relationship with one another. You see, God created the firmament to separate the waters and the land to separate the waters. And yet we see the necessary relationship of each element to the other for its existence and balance on the earth. God created the plants, the animals, male and female, birds and fish, an entire ecosystem, a giant community of a beautifully balanced relationship. And then the Holy Trinity, on the sixth day, got together, looked at each other, and said to one another, Let us 
make man in our image according to our likeness. If you've never realized this before, even the Trinity itself is a community. The Trinity itself is a relationship that is interdependent one to another. They see all of creation is good, but it's not finished yet. Because man should not be alone. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It is not good that man should be alone. And by the way, man here isn't just a reference to males, but to all humanity that it is not good for humans to be alone. All of creation was created to coexist in community. Humanity was created for relationships. You see, we are created as social beings interdependent upon each other for our existence. This is why the coronavirus has been such a challenging reality for all of us. It's caused an unnatural separation, an unnatural distancing and isolation from each other. The virus has reminded me just how much of an extrovert I really am. Mercy, I miss being around other human beings even the ones that I thought I didn't really enjoy being around. Even the introverts are feeling the lack of human touch, missing being able to reach out, to shake hands, to hug another human being. We've all been forced to reinvent socializing. We've been forced to close the physical doors of the church, to move our services to online. But does that mean that we are forced to give up on community? Does social distancing, the reality that we cannot be in physical proximity with one another, does that mean that we can no longer be a community? No. No. And listen, this morning, i got to tell you, I'm so proud to be part of this church family. I'm so proud that this church community, that since COVID-19 first hit, we've been drawing together while remaining physically apart. This church community has been doing everything in its power to practice the gospel of community and to remain together while we must remain apart. Let me take, you, uh, let me take a minute to tell you how proud I am of Pine House. Because you see, when the fire is first closed the doors of this church, the church's online doors opened even wider. We started posting daily devotionals of encouraging and uplifting biblical thoughts to take us through and keep us encouraged through the first few weeks of this pandemic. Our online YouTube services that you are watching right now have seen a wide variety of church members stepping up and willing to be uncomfortable for the sake of community by recording themselves, many with their, in their homes with their cell phones or, or, or maybe their spouse holding a phone for them, facilitating the different aspects of the regular Sabbath worship service. What a blessing it has been to see so many of our church members being together online while having to remain apart physically. That is what community is all about. But we're not done. The church family has been reaching out to those in need, by the way, delivering groceries and even full meals to members who have had family in the hospital through this time. When many of our members lost loved ones, your church community family drew together and held an online support and grieving service. Our Sabbath school teachers from the various age groups have all drawn together and have been doing a fantastic job, excuse me, a fantastic job of facilitating Sabbath school for every age group, every single Sabbath. From kindergarten, juniors, early teen, youth, and adults. Our young adults get together every other week to support one another and study together different life topics from physical health, mental health, and by the way, this afternoon, finances. Individual and group Bible studies all continue online. Marriage and couple counseling is taking place right now online. Weekly Wednesday night prayer meetings continue together. For Mother's Day, I'm so happy that our church did this. For Mother's Day, your women's ministry got together and sent out hundreds of Mother's Day cards. On Friday night, our youth continue to gather for online hangout, Bible markings, and even online game nights. And I'm sure that there's so much more that I'm missing that we as a church community have been doing to stay connected and practice community. 
I'm so proud of this church family, this, this community who admits who amidst the time of drastic social distancing have been drawing together and practicing the gospel of community. And so this morning, I want to reach out to you especially and ask you that if you are feeling disconnected to your church community, make sure that you get connected with at least one of the many outreaches and online meeting places. Because right now in this day and age, at this time, we have to use every means we can to continue to practice the gospel of community. And you see, I'm so proud of our Pinehouse community and all that we've been doing together while we must remain apart. But with that said, with everything that we are doing, does that mean that we're doing enough? Does that mean that, that are we reaching all of our church family? Does it mean that we're doing all that we can to remain a community, especially amidst this time? Or can we as a Pine House Church community be doing even more? You know, many times I hear so many people asking, well, well, what is the church going to do for me and my family? What is the church going to do for me in this situation? What is the church, what is the church doing to reach so-and-so and to touch so-and-so? And man... I hear this all the time, man, I wish the church would do more of this. And, and man, I wish the church would do more of that. Yet so many of us fail to realize that this building right here is not the church. We pastors, we elders, we leaders are an integral part of the church, but we're not the church in its entirety. Let, re let me remind you today that you are the church. Each of us are the church. And so the better question is, what can I do to practice the gospel of community in my community? What can I personally do to be the church? But you know what? Can I be a little bit frank with you? Can I be a little bit, a little bit vulnerable with you? And, and, and here's the thing with uh, online services is that I can't hear you saying no, so I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. Uh, and let me say this as gently as I can. We throughout our history of our Adventist church have been doing a great disfavor for the creation of community. Do you hear me this morning? Here's what I mean by that. Our main emphasis as a church has been more focused towards um, biblical truth and preaching biblical truth than it has about building community. And this at least is my experience, okay? Before you get mad at me and before you shut off your TV, listen and I know fully, I do believe that we are the remnant church. We are called by God to bring light into a world of darkness. We are called to bring the three angels' message to the world in preparation for the soon return of the Savior. And don't get me wrong, I can take the Bible right here, right now, and go through each and every one of our 28 fundamental doctrines and tell you why each of them are founded in the truth. But here's the problem, is that when we do that without building community, we are simply building a group of people that know biblical truth, but don't know how to love one another. We don't know how to truly be a community. When we focus more on doctrine, we tend to focus less on people. Doctrine is critical, don't get me wrong. But if we know doctrine more than we know our church community, we are amiss. What I'm simply trying to tell you is what Paul himself said to the church in Corinth. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'll give you a second as I'm currently trying to find it myself. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul is saying this to the church in Corinth. Though I speak, in verse 1, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. 
You see, I can know all the 28 fundamentals and preach from Scripture the validity of each doctrine, but if I can't be a shoulder to cry on, I know nothing. If I can quote pages of a certain sister but can't stop looking at another sister today in church the wrong way, then I know nothing. You see, if I can recite the Ten Commandments by heart but not have the heart to practice the spirit of the same Ten Commandments, then I don't truly know them. If I can tell you what happens when you die, but not be able to console you when your daddy or your sister or your brother dies, then I know what I know is of no avail. You see, true community requires intentionality. True, vibrant community doesn't just happen on its own. It requires intentionality. Paul tells us in the love chapter that, that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I don't know about you, but COVID-19 has been really testing me. Stretching me and pointing out to me all of my lackings in that verse. If COVID-19 has done one good thing, it is that it has clearly pointed out my flaws and also the selfishness of all humanity. I mean, think about it. Why in the world would you need to run to every Costco that exists and buy up every single pack of toilet paper that is in existence? Mercy, I went up to Costco at the beginning of this to try and restock my own bathroom shelf, right, with, with toilet paper. And because I was genuinely running out of toilet paper in my home. I mean, ask Pastor Manley. He had to tithe some of his toilet paper to this pastor right here and his family. I was standing at the till with my one simple pack of toilet paper, which, by the way, was a gong show to get. But anyway, standing at the till with this one pack, looking all around, almost being ashamed of of buying this one roll of toilet paper, uh, of thinking, hey, who's, who's around me thinking that I'm a hoarder now too? I'm, I'm hoarding all this toilet paper. I was doing that uh, the awkward, joking, yet serious thing where, where I was looking at the teller and telling her, listen, I, I'm not hoarding. I, I, I promise. I'm generally just out of TP, and my, home, my, kid, my, and my kid at home is, is, is just being potty trained right now, all right? So, you know, folks, I never knew the day that I would actually be ashamed of having to buy toilet paper. But then I was so angered and at the same time so saddened, if that's even possible, at the same time to see stories of how at the very beginning of this pandemic, some people would go to every Costco they could and completely empty all the shelves of Lysol wipes and sanitizers they could get their hands on just to turn around and, and, and sell it at 10 times the cost to, to turn an evil profit. And then when interviewed, this person was so proud of themselves of, of being the first to think up this evil scheme. You see, instead of thinking of how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, many thought of themselves and only selves taking care of their own before taking care of others. How about your home community? How has that been doing? Because you see, being isolated at home with the family has been a blessing, but let me tell you, it has stretched my patience. I love my kids, don't get me wrong. I would do anything for my children. I would give a life, I would take a life for my children. But I sure have realized that I am not a gifted homeschool teacher by any means. I sure have come to appreciate and respect you teachers so much more. Oh, God, I miss you. <laughs> But don't get me wrong, I love my wife. I would jump over the moon for her, but I sure do miss guys night out. You see, the social distancing and home isolation has taught me that in order for me to remain in community with my family, I must be intentional. I must ask myself, what am I doing to stir up love and good deeds in my home? Now, I've personally been doing this. Have I been doing this effectively? Maybe the better person you need to ask is my wife. But let's just say that I'm preaching this message to me this morning as I am to you. 
You see, intentionality means taking a step back and asking myself, hey, am I being kind? Am I being loving? Am I behaving rudely? Am I seeking my own? Am I bearing all things? Not only in my home, but in my church community. Am I picking up the phone and calling someone that may be lonely? Am I sending a random, I'm thinking of you, praying for you, text message to that young person that God has put in your mind? What am I doing to stir up, to provoke one another to love and good deeds? <clears throat> Excuse me. We are definitely created to be social beings, being in community, beings in relationship. And you see, in just a few weeks, phase three in Saskatchewan will be going forward where restaurants and gathering places will, will be reopened. You can tell that humanity is desperate to get back to a sense of normalcy. On June 8th, Saskatchewan public places will be reopening at half capacity and, and social gatherings of under 30 will begin to be permitted outside. People are so eager to go back, quote-unquote, to life as usual. We're so eager to go back to normal. But was life as usual really all that good? Was the normal we practiced a few months ago really all that normal? The running to and fro, overstressed and underslept, trying to keep up with society. Do we really want to go back to that normal? Do we want to go back to the normal of ignoring our children, disregarding our spouse, working overtime, and even more overtime, telling ourselves, oh, I, I, I'll read my Bible later. I'm too busy right now. This pandemic has been a horrible reality. Something I, I would have never wished upon anyone. The social isolation or social distancing has been incredibly difficult. But this time has also given us one good thing. More time at home. More time to be able to grow our home community, our church community. More time to be with our spouse and our children. And more time with God. And so as we get ready to turn off YouTube this morning and gather together with your family at home for Sabbath lunch or, or go for a walk, whatever you do on your Sabbath day, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, it has been a trying time. It has been a difficult time. It has been a few months now, I've even lost count, of doing something that is completely unnatural for humanity, of being a part but Father God, one thing that we have learned is that we must be intentional in our efforts to maintain a community. Father God, we must remember that even though we are apart, we can still be together. And Father God, I pray that you may keep each of us faithful until this ends and into the time of your second coming. Father God, keep us close to you and to each other. As a blessed community, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.